it in the pocket. That's good. Okay. Good morning, all. Uh, my name is John Stubbs. It's a pleasure to be before you today to speak on a topic that's very dear not only to our heart here in the School of Architecture, but to the hearts of most New Orleanians and indeed the country. Protection of the cultural heritage of this great city and its um, hinterland. And for us, the hinterland really includes not only the Gulf Coast of the United States, but also the whole Caribbean basin. And indeed, we think in terms of the whole Western hemisphere, with New Orleans being smack dab in the middle of that hemisphere. And our history in the Historic Preservation Program, now 25 years running, we have really been training students in historic preservation from many countries, uh, from at least this half of the planet. I joined the faculty just this last July, standing in the footsteps of Gene Sizek, who founded the program in 1996, and who did huge work in uh, documenting historic buildings throughout the region, and some very significant work in planning for historic preservation. So when you go to places like Faubourg Marinet here in New Orleans, you can thank Gene and his team for saving pretty much the whole place, because the field of preservation, as I think you all know, is all about connecting with locals. It's all about dealing with site-specific, real problems in the field, full scale. There's very little time to fuss about theory, although we love theory and talk about the origins of the field, theories in the field, and so on. The program here has the classic balance of um, history, theory, design, technology. We're looking to expand it to include the business of historic preservation and more sophisticated treatments of documentation. The students choose us from many programs across the country. I think uh, our class of some 35 students now speaks for itself. I'm very pleased with the quality of the students we get here. And they all seem to see it for what it is, that New Orleans is an extraordinary place to study this topic. We have written the book in this country in many respects uh, in historic preservation. It goes back to the 19th century. Tulane has a proud place in that book where our founding dean, William Woodward, at the turn of the 20th century was a hugely enthusiastic preservationist who saved the Presbyter down in the French Quarter, for instance, and went on to shape the formation of the vieux Curé Commission some 20 years later. Other deans and significant faculty member, William Spratling, Richard Koch, Ron Filson, John Lawrence, all the way through to our wonderful, beloved dean now, uh, Kenneth Swartz, all get it and understand that historic preservation is an essential part of architectural education. Why? Because it's the built environment in which we operate here. New Orleans, as you all know, is no ordinary built environment with our extraordinarily deep history the authentic variety of the architectural expressions we see here and the degree to which it's all survived, all under this incredible canopy of oak trees for the most part and all kinds of things that relate to this topic having to do with modern pressures on the culture and so on. So these are just a picture of about 50% of the present student class. I'll fly through some of the projects and the belief that the projects speak for themselves. You're all aware of our history here. We, it's in our face. We, 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 we deal with this every day. We're comp the studios here are in the field half the week, working with actual problems in the field, dealing with the curators and owners of these properties, hearing about the real issues and helping them solve problems, not just listen and analyze things. Our French Quarter is influential um, for many reasons across the country and noted throughout the world as, as really the most intact and one of the largest enclaves of historic buildings uh, on the planet. And there are reasons for that, uh, the laws that are behind it and the administrators that are behind it. And I might add that a lot of the people in preservation in this region graduated from Tulane's Master's in Preservation Studies program. So we all work together. We're uh, quite close and uh, a lot of those professionals are, are coming through the school week in and week out teaching and playing roles uh, not only for my program but for the other programs here uh, at Tulane. 
the, this map really, in a second, shows you a minute uh, to what degree the uh, historic districts of New Orleans really occupy the built environment. Everything colored here is a historic district. So everyone working in these areas has to, really should have some exposure to proper um, training in the field. And I think I can, it's fair to say that every student of architecture here at Tulane, and, and it has been the case for some time, understands the importance of having some grounding familiarity with the field. And it's been a real pleasure for me to work with other colleagues and directors of programs who completely understand the importance of being uh, literate and competent in historic preservation because it is the basis for the built environments that we're working with in diverse ways from dealing with new uh, buildings to preserving the old and everything in between. People come to New Orleans for its history and culture, full stop. We know this. And they come in part for the environment that they experience here. This is a matter of record. So those that are in the business of looking after this built environment have a huge role to play. We have all kinds of forces to deal with here, ranging from the obvious nature to man-made forces, that including some wrong-headed planning uh, such as the demolition of this building by one of our more illustrious faculty member, Charles Colbert, that was built in 1956, the Florence Wheatley School. This was demolished some six months ago uh, for no real reason to build yet another sort of cookie cutter school in the Treme district. It could have been saved. So the point is we are in a race against time. We're dealing with uh, elements that are um, that are, that are forces to deal with and to try to try to work with. Uh, we're looking very closely at having a more influential role in even uh, city government decision-making processes for historic preservation. As for the projects, we deal with all animals, large and small, arranging from uh, doing a historic structures report for this very building, Richardson Memorial Hall, to dealing with cemeteries throughout the city, many of which are very distinctive architectural enclaves. This one building, uh, Ken Swartz asked us to do a historic structures report of it, and the team, the students, some 22 students worked on this for about eight weeks and uh, came up with a wonderful study that I can show you all at the coffee break, 250 page uh, document that doc really documents the history of this building as a basis for the design plans that uh, we have for expanding this building and modernizing it in the years to come that I think you'll hear more about later. This is one of the iconic buildings of the campus, uh, one of the top, the first five that were built here in this Richardson, Richardson S. style uh, that housed a number of illustrious fac uh, alumni over the years. The third person on the right of, of the pictures is Michael DeBakey, who invented the heart, his heart pump here on one of, in one of these rooms. All the way, that's when it served as a medical school through the 1960s and then uh, early 1960s, at which time the school was given over to the School of Architecture. And it's been the home of this wonderful school that has had a grand time in this fabulous building and our studios uh, from top to bottom uh, and, and all of its history. We really have uh, loved this building and are very proud to be here. So there's that, the heritage of there's a continuity, there's a, there's a uh, respect for history here in both the school and the city. The, stu the um, students working on this one project did every analysis you can imagine from dealing with significance of spaces to quantifying noise sources and so on, uh, all the way through to uh, looking at some expansion possibilities. That's a hugely important report that will qualify the restoration of this building in the next five years or so. Let me just show you in two minutes some of the engagement projects we're, we're involved with that engage the community. We always are working with um, actual projects in the city. The first semester uh, was one story where we dealt with uh, three or four uh, different projects. This semester we're dealing with uh, historic preservation on an urban scale. So we have a number of troubled districts across the city that are blighted. One is in an improbable location just behind St. Charles on this side of the interstate. Um, it's, uh, we call it really the Felicity Street Historic District. And this is it. We picked this for the first, um, for, the, for seven of the students to tackle. 
tip, you know, we've all seen this before across the country. What do we do with something like this? Well, it seems ripe for treatment uh, to save what we can, add end fill where we can, and develop this triangular park in the middle, all against the background of a new housing development that is seen on the far end of the picture. So it's a matter of dealing with the scar tissue of the city, sewing it together, again, most carefully in ways that engage the public. All of these are in areas where, that are fractured, with fractured communities uh, that are really, uh, by comparison with other parts of town, down and out. So here we are with this. Uh, you can tell by just the nature of the surviving architecture there what the task is. A second project is um, next to the gigantic biomedical um, site, center site, which is uh, some 24 blocks were demolished in the last uh, year or so with houses being moved in every direction that could be saved. Right adjacent to it uh, is a, is, are two blocks of buildings that we're dealing with to preserve the streetscape. These are single family detached residences that are, um, that are also uh, spotty, if you will. The, the students will be dealing with those to put that back together, again, with local participation. And finally, uh, I hope you can appreciate this balance of three projects that I've selected. One that's out of town, very importantly. We don't just want to work in the city, in New, in New Orleans. This is across Lake Pontchartrain in Mandeville, Louisiana. Different sort of urban area. The, it's called the Dewdrop Inn Historic District. The Dewdrop Inn was a benevolent club from the 19th century uh, that has become a favorite location and a very important location in the history of American music. It's every New Orleans musician's favorite place to perform. It's their kind of heart of hearts uh, in terms of their own history because in this building to the right, which is, looks for all the world like a, a meeting house or barn-like structure, is this beloved site where everyone played. Louis Armstrong started here, et cetera, et cetera. In the heart of Mandeville, Louisiana, this sleepy town across the lake. So the students, another seven students, will be dealing with saving this district while there's still time, because people have moved out since Katrina. There are these kind of buildings to get to before it's too late. And there it is in the heart of the, the center of Mandeville, Louisiana, right here. So nice slide to end on, I suppose, saying that historic preservation, it's, it does, it's not lost on anyone here in the city, is the heart of the matter, is a point of beginning for everything else that we do here. We live here, we celebrate here, we dream of the future here, we learn here, and to be a part of this process in such a key role teaching at Tulane University, and there's no preservation program for 200 miles in any direction, uh, is an honor indeed. So we're looking forward to great years ahead. Uh, there's all kind of examples of integration with the university, with the community, that I'm happy to talk to you all about in the Q&A period or later in the day. Thank you all very much.